gentlemen Shirley and Harrison Gibson give them a round of applause and our appreciation what we have had the opportunity to tell the Gibson family is that we will never forget their sacrifice and we will never forget officer Brian Gibson and as we approach this Thanksgiving holiday it's so important to acknowledge the many residents who embody this spirit of giving. And there is no better example of this spirit than the Gibsons. For the last 20 years, Ms. Shirley and Harrison have prepared meals for any and all law enforcement officers that come through their doors. And today I wanna to share with you why we're here because um, they've been doing this for 20 years in memory of their son. Officer Brian Gibson, the son of Mrs. Gibson, shared his family's unparalleled generosity. Brian served and protected our community in one of the most honorable ways possible. He chose to serve um, in our great force as a Metropolitan Police Department officer. He proudly served the district's residents in this capacity until February 1997, uh, when he was violently killed while sitting in his patrol car. As horrific as this tragedy was, the Gibson family was determined not to let this define them. There were difficult times and days, but they persevered through it all. They found comfort in the men and women of the Metropolitan Police Department that served alongside Brian. And within those men and women, the spirit of giving back to the community, our community was clear. Their generosity to the police department and our law enforcement partners is just one example of their wonderful spirit. So today, I'm proud to be here at Costco because Ms. Gibson has to get ready for Thanksgiving Day. And everybody gets ready for Thanksgiving at Costco. Uh, and uh, it is with that sense of community and giving back that I wanted to highlight and thank her once again. We join her for the annual shopping trip each year and we remember the delicious holiday meals that so many officers uh, enjoy while they're working and away from their own families. The Gibson family, your actions do not go unnoticed. And we know that you've been giving back all these years. And so today, uh, with the chief, and all the leadership and patrol officers of MPD, let's hear it for the fine men and women of MPD. We want to complain this day, November 17th, Shirley Gibson Day oh, in Washington, D.C. Yeah. 
Shirley Gibson from Ward 7 with her husband Harrison Gibson and family have maintained a nearly 20 year tradition of serving dinner to her late son Brian Gibson's colleagues in law enforcement. And whereas Officer Gibson's murder in the line of duty, Shirley took it upon herself to learn all that she could, becoming certified by MPD to train officers on grief and loss and post-traumatic stress management and other issues surrounding death and critical injuries in the line of duty. Whereas Shirley Gibson was elected National President of Concerns of Police Survivors, Inc., becoming the first ever parent to hold that position. And whereas Shirley Gibson has facilitated discussions on grief and loss in Washington, D.C. and throughout the region, as well as around the country. And whereas Shirley Gibson has kept Officer Gibson's legacy alive through her annual dinners and volunteer activism. And whereas Washington, D.C. recognizes the contributions of Shirley Gibson to ensure families of law enforcement who are victims of violence receive the support they need. This day in Washington, D.C. is Shirley Gibson Day. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, just as a small token, Ms. Gibson, we want to provide you and your family uh, with 15 tickets uh, to go to the African American oh <laughs> Museum of History and Culture. God bless Thank you. you. So uh, I'm going to tell the story, because uh, Shirley and I remember it very well, uh, of the morning that we met. And it was February 5th, 1997. That's right. Uh, a good friend of mine at the 4th District called me and told me that we had a police officer who was shot uh, and was very seriously injured. Uh, I went over to Washington Hospital Center, uh, and I saw the officers that were over there, and they were distraught. You could see on their faces they had just had one of their best friends that was injured in the line of duty, very, very seriously. So myself and a couple other folks uh, drove over to notify the family and bring them to the hospital so they could spend some time with Brian. Uh, and it was on that morning uh, that I met Shirley and Harrison. And uh, the thing that I remember distinctly about going into Brian's house uh, was on the mantle of his home, he had all of these awards uh, as a police officer, as a, a police officer on the Metropolitan Police Department. And I was thinking to myself as I stood there, uh, this is one of our heroes. And as I come to learn more about Brian, I learned exactly what the type of hero he was. Uh, and so we had the tragic loss of Brian's life uh, on that day. But on that day, a hero was born. And that hero was Shirley Gibson. Oh. And, and, and not that a lot of people would have been devastated uh, by that loss, the loss of our son. Our children are not supposed to die before we do. But Shirley took it upon herself uh, to take a leadership role in an organization called the Concerns of Police Survivors. She did it locally, she did it nationally, and she became the face of survivors across the country, and specifically in this region. Uh, she, she, she lost a son on that night, uh, but she adopted 3,700 men and women yes, as I her did. children, as the men and women of the Metropolitan Police Department. Yes, I did. When, uh, when Mayor Bowser learned uh, that Shirley had some family coming to town, uh, and they wanted to get in uh, to the National Museum of African American History and Culture, uh, the mayor decided that, you know what, this is a person in our city whose family deserves that to be able to, to, to go to that museum. And, and I, on behalf of the men and women of the Metropolitan Police Department, uh, can't thank you enough, Mayor thank Bowser. You. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, for one of our heroes, Shirley Gibson. Uh, thanks, Chief. And, and Shirley, 
I just wanted to say that as tragic as, as your loss was, I'm so grateful, and I think uh, Pete and the mayor and everybody here would agree, we're so grateful to God that you came into all of our lives. And I think one of the things we all realize when there is a loss of a police officer and everybody thinks about it at, at, at funerals and with the police violence that we've seen in our country recently, that's always in the back of your head. And having people like you to know that you can go on in your life and you can go forward. And we've got great groups here in D.C. like Heroes and Cops and people like you to support us. It, it gets us through these days. So surely, God bless you. Thanks for all you do. And I'm going to turn it over to... Uh, Greg Olemian, and I wanted to recognize a few people too, because through these years, um, and I have to say, Shirley, first of all, I've never missed a meal. Pete lets me know that sometimes. Um, but, but there's people working behind the scenes, Joey Crespo, Greg Olemian, yes. Dave Mosley, even things like a cleanup day that they yes. arranged at the Gibson House last week that are yes, always making sure that, and the, and the big thing with this MPD family and the family of law enforcement in DC, you're never forgotten. That's a great thing for us to know as well. You're never forgotten your loss. So I'm going to turn it over to Greg Olemian for presentation as well. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Shirley, for Shirley Ann Harrison, for 20 plus years, you guys have uh, donated your time, donated your money, done this for these officers out here, and we cannot thank you enough. Your drive, your determination has created, in my mind and ours, from Kale Fund, Capital Area Law Enforcement Fund. Joe Crespo, Travis Barton, Dave Mosley, myself, we came up with that fund to be able to help just like you have. So on behalf of all of them and Kale Fund, we're uh, offering you, providing you here a check of $2,500 to help out with this year's dinner. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. No, I just pull it down. I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And they always say there's not a microphone that Shirley can't get behind and talk. But what I want to say is this was one of the surprises of my life. And as tragic as it was for us to lose our only son and leave my daughter with no sibling, Metropolitan Police Department and law enforcement all through our city of Washington, D.C., as well as around the country, have embraced us and made us a part of the police family. As hard as it was to lose Brian, it's great to know that all of these, everyone that I see in uniform or out, that's connected to law enforcement are now our sons and daughters. They take care of us, they're concerned about us, and this is the one thing that we as a family could do. The 10 months after Brian was killed in the line of duty, I tried to figure out how in the world I was gonna get through the holidays because my son loved to eat. And he loved for his mom to cook at Christmas time. And I decided that I would fix all the favorite things that he loved to eat and call up to the fourth district and ask if they would allow any officer who wanted to come by to come and pick up a takeout plate. That first year, it was about 20 officers that came by. Now we're up to about 300. The best part about that is we have help from all quarters. People like Joe and Greg and Travis, people like Mark, people who care about us. And there's no way for me to let you all know how grateful we are to be a part of your family and to thank you for every year, everything that you've done to help us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Charlie. Thank you guys so much for this. This is the best thing I tell you. Yes, and I need help. Okay. We need to stop.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>